What would you do if you met a caterpillar bigger than you? Would you take advice from it? Well, hi there, Reader Adventure, and welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we are reading Chapter 5 of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, where we will meet a most unusual caterpillar and a paranoid pigeon. Let's get started. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, Chapter 5, Advice from a Caterpillar. The caterpillar and Alice looked at each other for some time in silence. At last, the caterpillar took the hookah out of his mouth and addressed her in a languid, sleepy voice. Who are you? said the caterpillar. This was not an encouraging opening for conversation. Alice replied rather shyly, <clears throat> I, I hardly know, sir, just at present. At, at least I know who I was when I got up this morning, but I think I must have changed several times since then. What do you mean by that? said the caterpillar sternly. Explain yourself. I can't explain myself, I'm afraid, sir, said Alice, because I am not myself, you see? I don't see, said the caterpillar. I'm afraid I can't put it any more clearly, said Alice, for I can't understand it myself to begin with. And being so very many different sizes in a day is confusing. It isn't, said the caterpillar. Well, perhaps you haven't found it so yet, said Alice, but when you have to turn into a chrysalis, you will someday, you know, and then after that into a butterfly, <laughs> I should think you'll feel a little queer, don't you? Not a bit, said the caterpillar. Well, perhaps your feelings may be different, said Alice. All I know is it would feel very queer to me. You, said the caterpillar contemptuously. Who are you? Which brought them back again to the beginning of the conversation. <sighs> Alice felt a little irritated at the caterpillars making such very short remarks. And she drew herself up and said very gravely, I think you ought to tell me who you are first. Why, said the caterpillar. Here was another puzzling question. And as Alice could not think of any good reason, and as the caterpillar seemed to be in a very unpleasant state of mind, she turned away. Come back, said the caterpillar, calling after her. I've something important to say. This sounded promising, certainly. Alice turned and came back again. Keep your temper, said the caterpillar. Is that all? said Alice, swallowing down her anger as well as she could. No, said the caterpillar. Alice thought she might as well wait, for well, she had nothing else to do, and perhaps it might tell her something worth hearing. For some minutes it puffed away on its hookah without speaking, but at last it unfolded its arms, took the hookah out of its mouth, and said again, So, you think you're changed, do you? I'm afraid I am, sir, said Alice. I, I can't remember things as I used to, and I don't keep the same size for ten minutes altogether. Can't remember what things, said the caterpillar. Well, I've tried to say, how doth the little busy bee? But it all came different, Alice replied in a very melancholy tone. Repeat, you are old, Father William, said the caterpillar. So Alice folded her hands and began. <laughs> you are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white. And yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age that is right? In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it might injure the brain. 
But now that I'm perfectly sure I have none, <laughs> why do it again and again? You are old, said the youth, as I mentioned before, and have grown most uncommonly fat. Yet you turned a back somersault in at the door. Pray, what is the reason of that? That is not said right, said the caterpillar. No, not quite right, I'm afraid, said Alice timidly. Some of the words got altered. It is wrong from beginning to end, said the caterpillar decidedly. And there was some silence for a few minutes. The caterpillar was the first to speak. What size do you want to be, he said. Oh, I'm not particular to any size, said Alice, only one doesn't like changing so often, you know. I don't know, said the caterpillar. <sighs> Alice said nothing. She had never been so much contradicted in her whole life, <laughs> and she felt that she was losing her temper. Are you content now? said the caterpillar. Well, I should like to be a little larger, sir, if you wouldn't mind, said Alice. Three inches is such a wretched height to be. It is a very good height indeed, said the caterpillar angrily, rearing itself upright as it spoke. It was exactly three inches high. But I'm not used to it, pleaded poor Alice in a piteous tone, and she thought to herself, I wish the creatures here wouldn't be so easily offended. You'll get used to it in time, said the caterpillar, and it put the hookah in its mouth and began smoking again. This time, Alice waited patiently until it chose to speak again. In a minute or two, the caterpillar took the hookah out of its mouth and <gasps> yawned once or twice and shook itself. Then it got down off the mushroom and crawled away in the grass, merely remarking as it went, one side will make you grow taller and the other side will make you grow shorter. One side of what? The other side of what? said Alice. Of the mushroom, said the caterpillar, just as if she had asked it aloud. Hmm, and another moment, it was out of sight. Alice remained looking thoughtfully at the mushroom for a minute, trying to make out which were the two sides of it. And as it was perfectly round, well, she found this a very difficult question. However, at last she stretched out her arms around it and as far as they would go, broke off a bit of the edge with each hand. And now would you switch, said Alice to herself and nibbled a little of the right hand to try the effect. The next moment she felt a violent blow underneath her chin. It had struck her foot. <gasps> she was a good deal frightened by this very sudden change, but she felt that there was no time to be lost as she was shrinking so rapidly. So she set to work at once to eat some of the other bit. Her chin was pressed so closely against her foot that there was hardly any room for her to even open her mouth. But she did at last and managed to swallow a morsel of the left-hand side. Come, oh, my head's free at last, said Alice in a tone of delight, which changed into alarm in another moment when she found that her shoulders were nowhere to be found. All she could see when she looked down was an immense length of neck, which seemed to rise like a stalk out of a sea of green leaves that lay far, far below her. <gasps> what can all that green stuff be, said Alice, and where have my shoulders got to? <gasps> and oh, my poor hands, how is it I can't even see you? She was moving them about as she spoke, but no result seemed to follow, except a little shaking among the distant leaves as there seemed to be no chance of getting her hands up to her head. She tried to get her head down to them and was delighted to find that her neck would bend about easily in any direction like a serpent. She had just succeeded in curving it down 
in a graceful zigzag and was going to dive in among the leaves which she found to be nothing but the tops of trees under which she had been wandering. When a sharp hiss made her draw back in a hurry, a large pigeon had flown into her face and was beating her violently with its wings. Serpent, screamed the pigeon. I'm not a serpent, said Alice indignantly. Let me alone. Serpent, I say again, repeated the pigeon, but in a more subdued tone and added with a kind of sob, I've tried in every way and nothing seems to suit them. I haven't the least idea what you're talking about, said Alice. I've tried the roots of trees and I've tried banks and I've tried hedges, the pigeon went on without attending to her, but those serpents, there's no pleasing them. Alice was more and more puzzled but she thought there was no use in saying anything more until the pigeon had finished. As if it wasn't trouble enough hatching the eggs, said the pigeon. But I must be on the lookout for serpents night and day. Why, I haven't slept a wink of sleep in three weeks. I'm very sorry you've been annoyed, said Alice, who was beginning to see its meaning. And just as I'd taken to the highest tree in the wood, continued the pigeon, raising its voice to a shriek. And just as I was thinking I should be free of them at last, they must needs come wriggling down from the sky. Ugh, ugly serpent. But I'm not a serpent, I tell you, said Alice. I'm a, I'm a, well, what are you, said the pigeon. I can see you're trying to invent something. I'm, I'm a little girl, said Alice rather doubtfully, as she remembered the number of changes she'd gone through that day. Ah, a likely story indeed, said the pigeon in a tone of deepest contempt. I've seen a good many little girls in my time, but never one with such a neck as that. No, no, you're a serpent, and there's no denying it. I suppose you'll be telling me next that you've never tasted an egg. I have tasted eggs, certainly, said Alice who was a very truthful child, but little girls eat eggs quite as much as serpents do. I don't believe it, said the pigeon, but if they do, why, they're just some kind of serpent. That's all I can say. This was such a new idea to Alice, hmm, that she was quite silent for a minute or two, which gave the pigeon the opportunity of adding, you're looking for eggs, I know that well enough. And what does it matter to me whether you're a little girl or a serpent? It matters to me a great deal, said Alice hastily, but I'm not looking for eggs as it happens, and if I was, I shouldn't want yours. I don't like them raw. Well, be off then, said the pigeon in a sulky tone as it settled down again in its nest. <sighs> Alice crouched down among the trees as well as she could, but her neck kept getting entangled among all the branches. And every now and then, she had to stop and untwist it. After a while, she remembered that she still held the pieces of the mushroom in her hands. And so she set to work very carefully, nibbling first at one, then at the other, and growing sometimes taller and sometimes shorter until she succeeded in bringing herself down to her usual height. It was so long since she had seen anything near the right size that it felt quite strange at first. But she got used to it in a few minutes and began talking to herself, as usual. Come, there's my plan half done. How puzzling all these changes are. <laughs> I'm never sure what I'm gonna be from one minute to another. However, I've got back to my right size and the next thing is to get into that beautiful garden. How is that to be done? I wonder. And as she said this, she came suddenly upon an open place with a little house in it about four feet high. Hmm, whoever lives there, thought Alice, it'll never do to come upon them this size. Why, I should frighten them out of their wits. So she began nibbling at the right hand bit again and did not venture to go near the house till she brought herself down to nine inches high. Wow! What did you 
think of chapter five. That was a most unusual caterpillar. <laughs> Be sure to join us next week when we'll continue with chapter six of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And thanks so much for being a reader adventure. Until our next video, happy story time.